What is up dudes and lady dudes? Welcome back to Just Nuts guys. Today I've got another deck profile coming at you. This time we're looking at Marine Cess. This is a really really cool archetype that I think just kind of got overshadowed by Silent Mangrates as far as the Link era goes. And I still think it never really got its chance to shine, but I already made a video talking about like why I think this archetype is kind of set up for the future of Yu-Gi-Oh! And how like two cards could literally turn this archetype completely around as long as those cards are like the right kind of cards this deck needs. But I still actually think it's a pretty cool rogue option as well. So today we're going to be looking through my current list for it. I'm doing my best to make this deck work. Um, it actually is does do some pretty cool things. Its main thing was just it, it doesn't consistently get to its own disruption. So I have some support cards in here that you might not be expecting actually. Slightly different than what you're expecting to get us to some potential extra disruptions. So without further ado let us go ahead and get into this deck profile. I'm just gonna go ahead and zoom this guy down. Whoop, there we go. All right, so starting off with our main deck here and the Marine Cess lineup, we've got three copies of Blue Tang, three copies of Seahorse, scoot these over, three copies of Pascalis, and two copies of Mandarin. Now this is like not the craziest thing in the world. This is definitely um, like fairly standard. I think if any of them you're not playing a three, it's gonna be Mandarin. She's really like kind of meh in certain situations. Just her, her summoning stipulation is a little bit rough. She needs two Marine Cess on the field and an open zone that a Marine Cess points to, which can be clunky in certain hands, but she's still a good extender and she can summon herself from hand or grave. So she's still pretty good there. Pascalis is one of the newer ones, uh, sort of newer, I mean, She's been out for a minute at this point. Um, but she is still pretty cool. On normal summon, she helps special normal summon or special summon. She can pull another Marine Cess out of the hand. And then also, uh, on another turn, other than the turn she was sent to Grave, she can banish herself to add a Marine Cess Spell or Trap back to hand. So that's mainly just going to be Marine Cess Wave if it's there. Um, but still nice recursion nonetheless. And then we have three copies of Seahorse, three copies of Blue Tang. These are the cream of the crop as far as like doing your combos. She uses like an, an extender that can summon herself from hand. And then later in the duel, she can banish herself from grave to special another monster from hand, but doesn't come up very often. And then Blue Tang is just like the best. It's the best starter in the deck. We're really trying to open this as much as possible. On normal summon, she dumps any Marine Cess monster. So you're either gonna dump uh, either our Seahorse or our, our uh, Mandarin, whichever one we don't have. Um, and then when it's linked off, used as link material for a water monster, you get to pretty much do a foxy. Look at the top three cards of your deck. If there's a Marine Cess card there, add it to your hand. We're pretty much digging for wave, but we'll take any free card that we find either, or also. Um, yeah, so that's it for the uh, the Marine Cess monsters. I only play one other like legit monster that's not a Marine Cess monster, and that monster is three copies of Silent angler this card i've never seen anybody play it not that nobody does but i've never seen a profile where anybody plays silent angler or marine says and god damn it they should this card is really really nice in the archetype um, so first things first it's level four so it helps us get to bahamut place second thing it's just a it's just a level it's just a, not a level it's just a water that jumps on the field super easily and one of this deck's weaknesses was getting like one disruption on like your link one can sometimes make you pass but if you open this with any marine says monster you now play through that um, which is just so nice. Like you'll see, like it makes it makes like uh, it makes like hands that lose to one disruption not lose to one disruption, and it makes like certain combos end on like not just a towers but a towers plus a toad, and yeah, and so it just it just amplifies everything in the deck. I think it's really really nice and slept on. I see everybody playing the frog package, but I think the frog package can be a little bricky. I like this guy a little bit more than that in my opinion. I mean, you're playing like three swap, but you're also probably playing like a dupe and a Ronin, which are definitely bricks. And so like three starters for two bricks, is that really worth? I'm just playing three extenders for consistency. All right. And then the only other monsters I play are three Ash and three Valor. We got to play hand traps. It's 2020. The meta is the meta. We got to stop Eldritch from going combo or you just lose uh, because you have to stop the combo so you can at least start worrying about their control aspect and uh, also uh, out Emancipator. You're really trying to open up one to at least two. You're trying to open two hand traps versus out Emancipator if you can going second. Um, so yeah, those are just nice going like going second cards. Then for our spells, starting off with three copies of Cyanet Mining. I know we have 
sanctuaries or circles here, but those are just my proxies for right now. I have one, I just need the other two. It's just like a $10 card. I don't play any other cybers card like decks at the moment, so I'm gonna pick them up at some point, just have, don't have them yet. Uh, this card's really good, just consistency. It's usually getting you to blue tang if you don't already have it, um, or it's baiting an ash, or it's gonna get you whatever other extender after like blue tang there is. So you might just grab um, Pascal, or not Pascal's, so you might just grab um, Seahorse, if you don't want Seahorse, you can grab Pascalis to pair with like a blue tang. That's actually a pretty nasty combo. It's just good, just consistency and uh, ash baiting without using your normal. Pretty good. Um, next spell, two copies of Desires. This is a deck, like you saw our monster lineup. It's like all three ofs except for Mandarin. And guess what? Mandarin doesn't matter. There's literally one card in the entire deck that you actually care if it gets banished all of. I guess you care if you banish three ofs, but you're playing three ofs of them, so like it's not going to happen that often. It's, it's Battle Ocean. This is the only card that it really conflicts with at all. You're very consistently able to end on Battle Ocean or a, a Battle Ocean like uh, Towers esque monster uh, in this build. Um, but if you banish it, so what? You just play more of a, a grindy, like, controlling matchup that you were going to play anyway. You just don't end on the towers. You still end on a beater with, like, great resource efficiency. And the plus one is just necessary, in my opinion. If you didn't want to play this, you could play, like, Call by the Grave instead. Because, like, some in a weaker hand, hand traps can still be super annoying, like a Veiler or an Ash can be really annoying in certain situations. But I, um, I've been waiting on this because I think the ceiling is just higher here. A little less safe. Um, than like uh, Called by the Grave, but higher ceiling in my opinion. And I think that's what this deck, this version of the deck would, uh, really appreciates. So that is it for the uh, the monsters here, or not the monsters, the spells, which means we are going into our traps now. It's pretty standard, I think. We're playing just kind of like a normal trap, trap trick line. If you guys have seen this for me tons of times, you know I love controlly type decks and this fits right into my wheelhouse, uh, building it like this. We've got three copies of trap trick because we are playing enough traps to warrant it. We're playing three copies of Marine Cess Wave, three copies of Paleozoic Dynamiscus, three copies of Infinite Impermanence, and two copies of Compulsory Evacuation Device. So, getting to this part, uh, a lot of it's probably self-explanatory here. The idea of this deck is you really want to get to a Towers play, but also just open two to three other disruptions to then keep your opponent off of being able to even mess with your towers play because as, as good as a towers is especially when it's like 4500 attack this kind of towers play can just be completely derailed if your opponent can just remove the field spell so all it takes is one spell or trap removal and your monster is not unaffected anymore so what these are is that like possible disruptions we can open up to just keep our opponent off of being able to get rid of our towers. Or, if they're going to put resources into it, we still punish them by just disrupting them anyway. They don't actually make any play past that. And then next turn, we just like run them over with big beaters. So, really, really cool. Dynamiscus is awesome because this deck is incredibly resource efficient. As far as its link summoning goes, you have like zero card combos. You get to add everything back at the end of your turn. And so, this guy you always have like discard fodder for, as well as it can come back as an extender. Just another level. Um, well, not level another water monster to use as a link material next turn um wave is just insane like this i've i've, I've said it in my video but this deck needs like uh, a wave but like destroys cards instead that would actually like just give such a huge buff to this archetype uh trap trick a lot of times you're normally just going either for wave or dynamiscus off trap trick um but you can still go off, off after compulse speaking of which um, Compulse is an interesting one. This is definitely a flex spot. If you wanted to play another normal trap, you could. I just didn't want to like play Karma Cut or something else, uh, Phoenix Wing Wind Blast, and play too many cards that need discards, and then I'm not ending up with like legit follow up plays at that point because I'm just discarding all my like Marine Sus monsters. So uh, I liked this because it still is like more monster removal because between like Veil or Wave, Impermanence, we have a ton of negation not as much removal which is one thing that this archetype doesn't have a ton of anyway in fact it doesn't have any built-in removal you have to like have supplementary stuff so that's why i wanted the compulses and it doesn't take a discard so it's a little bit more resource efficient and then the impermanence it's great it's just so versatile it's fine to draw going first it's just an extra disruption fine draw and then even better drawing second just as a bypassing guardian in the ad emancipator matchup still getting a monster negate really really good so 40 cards in the main um yeah we're really just trying like we have literally 20 cards that are just disruptive cards 14 traps and then the three ash three veiler so even if you don't draw an incredible hand and all you do is end on the link three 
you still probably have like three disruptions, at least three disruptions in your hand. And that's why this deck is like so consistent. All right, but then we get to the extra deck. So we're going to start off here with our blue slug. I'm actually playing three of her. I don't even know if three is necessary, but there's honestly just not a ton of cards you can play in this deck just because she is like the first card you go into and she locks you into waters. So yeah, <laughs> but she's really good. She just gets you a free add back on summon. One copy of Marine Sus Sea Angel. She's really good as well. She just adds you your Battle Ocean. This is another card. Konami just should probably make one decent spell. Honestly, this deck has no monster removal, so just give us a spell that's like Fisher. <laughs> Literally give in Archetype Fisher, and we're playing it just because of like Sea Angel. So that'd be cool, but yeah, she's good. She just gets you Battle Ocean for free. Uh, two copies of Coral and Enemy. This is the only other proxy I have in the deck just because Coral and Enemy is still like 15 to 20 bucks for no reason. This deck does nothing. It's not, Coral and Enemy is not played in anything else that's relevant. But for some reason, it's still 15 to 20. Whatever. We got Megatons coming. Hopefully, it'll, it'll be in there. But yeah, uh, it's really good. I don't think you need three of it. I think that's probably overkill. But it's just like a plus two. It reborns something. Then when you link it off, it adds you something back. It's literally a plus two. It's so good. Uh, one of my favorite cards in the, arc, in the deck, for sure. Uh, one copy of Marine Test Crystal Heart. You got to play this just because uh, you have to play this just to make the towers play. Because uh, Battle Ocean just says uh, to get the unaffected uh, effect, it has to be a Link monster in the extra monster zone that was used. Uh, used Crystal Heart as material, I believe, is the stipulation. So, got to play one of it. Doesn't really do anything. You never use it for its effects. And the last Link to I play is one Mastar Boy. Uh, normally, it only really comes up if you're like trying to push for game. Just put an extra 500 damage on everything on your field. It also floats, which is pretty nice. Um, yeah, it's fine. I also thought about playing like the Charmer as well area, but the problem with with that is like we already play an enemy. Like I'm never going into her, like an area when I could be going into an enemy, uh, be, especially just because like area is reliant on our opponent putting something in grave. And like yeah, they a lot of people play Needle Fiber, but like what does that even do for me? It just really doesn't do enough. Whereas, like, Coral Enemy is getting a special and then also an add back from Grave. So it's just better in every way. Just felt like he was going to come up more. Two copies of Marbled Rock. You're going into at least one of this every single duel. And a lot of grindier duels, you're going into both. This card's insane. Just gets you an add of any Marine Sus card in Grave once per turn. Just a once per turn. So I really love adding Wave back with this. This is essentially like your Sunlight Wolf in that regard. That, like, once you get a Wave in rotation, you're negating your opponent every turn. And then you're just getting that negation back every turn uh which is really good so i like that a lot and then she also has like battle protection which uh, can come up in niche situations but she's really good she's one of my favorites one shooting code talker this card's weird this is another card like if you really wanted to play area you could also drop this uh he just says like i believe he gets an additional attack for every monster he points to plus one uh not additional attacks but he gets an, an attack equal to the member he points to plus one so if he points on one thing he gets two attacks and then after the battle phase i believe for every monster you killed by battle you draw a card so you kill two things by battle you just draw two so that's how you kind of run away especially with like all the traps and hand traps you play you just draw two of those and you're literally just like cool <laughs> cool like now i've got two more disruptions that you have to play through after i just wiped your board gg um, so yeah he's pretty cool he's like nothing crazy but he can come up in like specific situations just get us big draws and then the last two are the two Link 4s, one Wonder Heart, one Bubble Reef. Uh, they can come up in their own situations. Sometimes if I definitely, if I could get to Towers, but like I don't have a ton of disruption, I'll probably go Bubble Reef because Bubble Reef says on standby, both player standby phases, you can banish a water monster from your graveyard to draw one card. Um, and the reason that matters is between three Ash, three Veiler, uh, three Marine says Wave, you're kind of just trying to draw into one of those. They'll all be live from hand, and I know in permanence you could be like, oh, John, like that kind of makes impermanence worse. Those situations are pretty specific. They're not coming up all the time. Um, so, like, I don't think it's, like, the worst thing in the world that impermanence doesn't vibe with it, but you're pretty much hoping to just rip one of those and get an extra disruption, make, bolster up your board just a little bit more, add a little bit of disruption your opponent has to play through before going after your towers. And then Wonder Heart, she's cool. She floats, which is really nice. She also has, uh, like, the battle phase shenanigans, where if she battles, she can just, like, special summon one of the monsters equipped to her, uh, which means when you push for game next turn, you're able to just, like, put a lot more damage into your opponent and really, like, force them back. So pretty cool. They both have their own uses, but I do appreciate Bubble Reef. I know she's not the best card. She's not exactly what the archetype needed, but uh, she still is nice, and she does come up. 
And then we finish off with the last two cards in the extra deck. Pretty self-explanatory here. Bahamut Shark and his best friend. Totally awesome. Again, a proxy. Mike has all three of my toads because he was testing out with uh, Paleozoics before uh, they actually got uh, toad got hit to one. But I need to get a toad back from him. But yeah, pretty much like this deck and actually very like very consistently. Like over half the time, at least, you're able to end on like a Towers plus a Bahamut into a toad, uh, which is honestly pretty dang good um in my opinion especially if you have like two other disruptions with it because that's what you're ending on all the time is like a towers a toad and like either two hand traps or like a hand trap a trap or two traps like something some kind of combination of that and you're usually ending like three to four disruptions plus a towers pretty good so Guys, that is my take on Marine Cess here. Definitely let me know. Let me know in the comments down below how you feel about this deck, how you feel about this build, and specifically, do you have any specific suggestions that you think I should try out in this build? This build has been so clean in test hands. I really want to potentially do a test hand video for you. So definitely throw it down in the comments down below as well if you want to see a test hand video because I'm totally down to do that. I actually had a lot of fun doing test hands with these and just seeing what this deck can do. It is no joke. Legitimately going first this deck is no joke so i would love to show that to you guys and also i could just do a, a combo video as well if you'd like to see that so let me know what you think about that stuff down below in the comments and uh i guess i'll see you in the next video thank you so much for watching as always subscribe to the channel if you have not yet and you want to see more deck profiles from your boy and i'll see you in the next one peace